Hey everybody, it's me again. I'm going over layers today in this video. I'm um, sorry it's not coming out sooner. I had a uh, recording it again because the last video I was really tired and it just it wasn't good. So I'm redoing it while I'm more awake and I can actually give you a better uh, informative tutorial. So right now we're just going to start with making new layers. Um, on the right side of your screen here, uh, it says layers, tool options, brush presets. The layers is always going to be showing first, unless you customized your user interface, in which case it's wherever you left it. Uh, on the bottom here, there you have all these um, little icons. The plus sign is where you're going to add your new layer. So if you just tap it once, your new layer will show up right above layer 1 or whatever else you have. So just keep pressing it, lots of new layers. I'm going to undo that. Now if you click the arrow, you can do the same thing. Your paint layer is just going to be your standard layer that you want. As you can see, it's letting you know how many layers I've made so far. This will be my eighth layer. I'm going to undo that. You have uh, fill layers, file, so if I want to like import something for reference, whatever, I can do that. Uh, vector layer, be wary of that in the 4.0 version which is out with the beta um, I don't think at this time of recording the full versions out yet uh, there's some uh, backwards compatibility issue with the vector layer so if you are going to play with that just be aware going from the beta to the stable 3.1 release uh, filters and clone your layer group layer all that fun stuff but I'm just going to go over the basics of just making a simple new layer. I don't know if you can hear that. My boyfriend's watching Godzilla. I hope he can't. Alright, so. I'm going to make a, another layer. Layer 10. Uh, you can toggle the visibility with a little eye icon. So if it's closed, you can't see it. If it's open, you can. So if I scribble here. It's no, the visibility is off now. And then I can scribble on top of the other layer, and now that's off. Undo that. So if, let's say I have uh oh my tablet fell asleep on me. There we go. So let's say I have a circle and. Let's say it's my sketch layer, so we'll name it sketch, and then we'll name this face. So in case I want to have my expression different, there we go. Now I want to group these two, so that way I can keep my sketch layers and everything in one place. I don't have them filling up my entire uh, Docker panel here. So I can do one of two things. I can go here and click on group layer. That will make an empty group. Uh, you can see or you can tell that it's group layer by the little folder icon here. So, you know, it's like putting files in a folder. And to place those other layers in that group, are, uh, these arrows come into play. So this one, the top one that's called face, cannot go up any further because there's no place for it to go but by clicking the down arrow once, it automatically goes into that layer. In the sketch layer, I can't go down anymore, there's no place for it to go. So if I click the up arrow once, it also goes in the group layer. And it retains that hierarchy, like the face was above the sketch, and it just stays that way. Now if I want the face to be out of that group layer, I can just hit the down arrow until it's out, or I can hit the up arrow until it's out again. Same with the sketch layer. But for now, I'm going to keep it in there. So, let's see. Uh, we'll go over the locking transparency. Uh, this is really useful if you have a layer you don't want to edit, you don't want to touch, you don't want to mess it up. Um, it's really good to lock it. That way. You can't do anything to it. You can't move it, you can't color on it, you can't crop it, you can't select on it. Well, you can, but you can't do anything in that layer. So nothing I can't move it but the one under it I can still do stuff too now locking the transparency is different what it's doing is it's taking all the transparent elements so let's say let me actually show you 
Um, let me actually make a new layer to show you properly. Such a bad smiley. All right, so I'm gonna adjust my background color and take that off. All right, so you can see the smiley. So if I lock the transparency, uh, this checkered background is showing that this is transparent. So there's no content, there's no anything there. It's just blank, it's empty. By lacking that transparency, I can't. Oh, I'm not supposed to be able to color on it. Am I on the wrong? Oh, I see what it's doing. Because that layer is there. Let me. There we go. Alright. So that was basically picking up the background color I had, or the canvas color for some reason. I don't know why it was doing that, but we'll just use a, a white background. Um, I got purple on. I can't color anywhere where that empty space is, but the lines that I had in black, it's something that the brush can attach to and make a new line or color. So I can make this like rainbow. Put new blue. I'll just change the purple. This is not a rainbow, but you get the idea. Can do multicolors. Just, just do green, kind of. Do a yellow. Oh, that's ugly. That was an awful yellow. There, so you can kind of tell that there's multiple colors going on here. So as long as I have some content or something already in this layer and it's not empty, I can color over it, um, to do whatever I want to it. I can even erase it, and it's gone. Now that's a permanent change, so if I unlock it, it's going to stay that way. And as you can see, by taking off this white background, the transparency is still there. change that back. Alright, now the alpha inheritance is a little different. What the alpha inheritance does is it takes the information of the layer below it with the transparency and it takes and it uses that as a mask for the rest of the content that you make. So if I were to make another layer here, actually I'll just use my sketch layer. I will make a big oops, block here, and I'm going to take this layer and move it down, and let's look at the alpha inheritance. So you can see that the face disappeared. The reason for that is because on the sketch layer, there is really nothing under that face. It's just empty. Now, if I go back to the sketch layer and I start to add in more color, then you can tell that it's picking up the, uh, that there's something there for that, that color or that layer to appear on. Kind of like paint. You know, you can't paint in the air. It's not going to work. You need like a solid canvas or, or some sort of paper or something. So by throwing all this color here, I'm giving it something to hold on to. Now if I take that alpha inheritance off, anything that I have previously drawn will reappear. So let's change this to, let's change it to like dark red. So I'm, oops, wrong layer. I'm going to scribble over here. You can see absolutely nothing right now, but if I take off the alpha inheritance, it's going to appear. This can be helpful if you're not sure about what you're doing with your color work yet, or you know, or you don't have to even turn it off, you can just keep it on for the rest of your painting progress. Uh, I usually keep it on all the time when I'm coloring because I don't have to do any cleanup, I don't have to worry about staying within the lines with line work. It's really a nice feature, I, I really like it. So 
So that's just the basics of the panel here. Now if you want to get rid of a layer that you don't need anymore, you can just hit the trash can icon here. Uh, this should just duplicate your layers instead of right clicking and hitting duplicate. So if you right click you can change the layers uh, color. So you can say like all the browns like the layers for cake picture you're painting and the browns like the actual cake part and then the frosting is we'll just say it's green or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, you can remove the layer which is the same as you know deleting it. You can group it, locking the visibility. If you for some reason want to right click everything uh, everything I talked about, locking the layer, elf inheritance, locking the transparency, it's all here. Uh, you can merge it with the layer below. Come on. Oh, it's a white layer. Hmm. I can't, do, don't want to do that. So, merge layer below, there we go. And merge again. So, now everything is in one single layer. Uh, when you do that and you have alpha inheritance on, it won't um, it, it won't take the information that was scribbled over here. It'll, it'll save it as it was for you. So if I take it off, oops, let me do that again here. Well, I'll just keep the red. Then I'll lock the transparency. I'm scribbling over here. It's there, but if I merge the layers, it's gone for good. It's that information's just gone. I'm going to undo that again, and then, I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it for the layers. I mean, you can play with other uh, settings here. Oh, you want to flatten. If you flatten the layer, let's see, we'll flatten everything here. If I hit flatten image, um, if your layer is hidden, as the message says, it's going to go away forever because what you're doing is you're taking all the layers and merging them into one. It's not going to retain any alpha inheritance, any lock transparency, anything. It's just whatever is visible, it is what you get. It's kind of like how you save out your final image as a JPEG or a PNG. You're not going to really have your layers anymore. It's pretty much like that. I mean, some people like that, some people don't. And as you can see, uh, the root root merged. My canvas color is also part of that layer merge or flatten image. So it's, if I erase it, that, that whole thing is going. It's going away. So if you have uh, your canvas color uh, just as the canvas color is not in the layer and you, because you like to edit it like I have done, when you flatten the image, it's just going to become part of that final layer. And that's pretty much it for my introduction to layers. I mean, you can get pretty fancy with it. You can group within groups and use your alpha inheritance that way too. Um, there's, I don't think there's a limit to how many groups you can have in a group. I usually do uh, two to three. I'll have three groups. So I'll have group one. Let's name it. Then I'll make another group. And then within this group, I'll make another group. It usually depends on what I'm doing. If I'm messing with layer settings and trying to get like a neat color effect going or just to try out different ideas. I mean, there's really endless possibilities in your groups. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope I didn't go too fast for you. Um, I kind of want to keep things simple. I know my video has been kind of long lately. Uh, if you have any questions or want me to go over anything else, let me know in the comments below. Uh, definitely like and subscribe and share if you think it might help someone else that you know that's trying out Krita. Or if you just want to be like, hey, cool video. Um, I also have my Patreon link and another link in my description. Um, it's just like coffee, I think, or Ko-Fi. I say it as Ko-Fi because that's how I see it spelled. Uh, basically, if you want to throw a few dollars my way um, for putting out the content, that'd be appreciated. You know, I don't really get anything out of this. Um, I just do it for fun to help you guys out. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.